Star Trek 57, M23, take two. It's Scott Star Trek, episode 24. Enterprise season one, episode 18. Rogue Planet. In a world where night never ends. It would be foolish to go into the jungle alone. A creature that can take any form lies in wait. She was real. We can look like anything. That's how they trick you. In all new Enterprise. Jonathan. Someone there? I heard someone guy some guy say um quesadilla once. <laughs> and what is in Napoleon Dynamite they say quesad quesadilla or something. But th- some guy went quesadilla. Is it is it an is it an e at the end? No, it's it's, it's just an a uh at the end. It's it's an uh, it's, it's an i it's an i l l a. The double yeah, l makes it a ya. No quesadilla. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He was trying to pronounce it extra fancy. Like yeah, he thought he was pronouncing it extra right, but like, he pronounced it too much. What's the quesadillo? Queso. Someone asked once for, and I, I really don't want to sound like I'm making fun of people because I've I've said many stupid things. But I someone asked for uh-huh. um a brownie a la made once. Which is just um, <laughs> a la mode, a la mode, yeah. But I can see the. I guess I can see the error because it's like a la. Oh, it's ooh la la, you know, made, you know. What's the quesadillo with Rogue Planet? Oh shit! <laughs> can you get it like a quesadillo a la made? Oh shit! A la Rogue Planet. Am I right? You know, I was thinking about it. It's that's just a, an exoplanet. I need no to- exoplanet means any planet that's not. Like in our solar system, it's a rogue. Oh, it's it's li- it, that's more, okay. I it's see. literally a rogue planet, a, 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 a rogue, planet rogue that has been be. flung off its host star. Okay, so the exoplanet is not just one that's been flung off its host. Star. Yeah, I was real quick. It's I was any I, old planet. I was thinking about it. I need to. I need to be more wacky. I'm not wacky enough. What do you mean? I just need to be more wacky. Do you mean on, in, on the podcast or in life in general? Well, well, I mean, in life, I'm I probably need more energy. Sort of your outlook on life needs to be wackier. Well, I need to have more energy in general in life because I'm kind of like low energy often. So <sighs> I need to figure out what's causing that. But um, maybe you got low T. That's what I th- I asked the doctor once. He was like, "No, you, you don't have low T." <laughs> I right. asked the doctor I once. He says, doctor. "No, you don't have low T." I was just like, "Well, and I was like, well, just give me some." And he's like, "No, there's a lot of side effects. I'm not going to give you that." <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that an episode of uh, King of the Hill, right? Where yeah, he, uh, Peggy yeah. Hill starts. Oh, uh, she's putting it in his coffee. Him. Yeah, she doses him. Yeah, and him and him and um, Joseph are all like doing some teenager oh, stare at each other. Um, but uh, in the podcast, I need to have more more zip and zoo. You know, I feel like the past couple of weeks of I haven't had enough zippity zoo. Yeah, maybe the quarantine really? has gotten you down. It might be You've getting been me down. Pretty zippity zoo. But check it out. I wore these to get myself spiced up. I wore these monkey socks. Oh, I see. I'm wearing monkey socks. Socks that have monkeys on them. Illustrations of monkeys. They're like yeah. the monkeys that are in the barrel of monkeys. Exactly. A barrel like of monkey the, the, socks. The monkeys that all hook together with their spirally arms. Yeah, they're like they got that argyle style. I find the socks upsetting. They got. It. <laughs> God damn it. No, well, no. I, I, I don't mean that as a judgment. That's no, a no, judgment. no. A... I, I, me- I No, I meant God damn it. I feel bad that I make you feel bad. <laughs> I kind of like it because it it, it, it it lends a certain spice to life. To well, have maybe, a certain... well, maybe this... Ugh. Well, maybe this sexual tension that's been created will spice things up a bit. Um, That'd be cool. I also am not wearing my my sensible Skechers. I'm wearing my my wild and crazy New Balances too. So just so you all know, and some new cargo long pants that I bought at BJ's. What's a cargo long pants? It's it's they're they're like long pants. Oh, with okay, okay. I'm gotcha. wearing Adidas. Yeah, sorry, cargo pants are always associated with shorts. You wearing a- the Adidas? Adidas. All right. So it's this sort of. Uh, it's, so I just want. I, I just wanted to prepare you. It's this sort of lovely banter that has gotten us placed on the feed spot list of sixty Star Trek podcasts. Right. Top sixty That's, Star Trek this, podcasts. This is what's done it. This is. <laughs> this is what the people come for. It's Dan. The feed spot list. Anyway, that's cool. It's got Dan. It's it's cool. The it's got Star Trek uh, is now on the feed spot list, which is exciting. Uh, it was listed as number twenty seven. I don't know if it's a. I don't think it's a ranking. I don't well, know. Well, that doesn't matter. That it can be. It's we can pretend it's implied. We can pretend it's a ranking. But anyway, we'll give the link to the website in the show notes so you can go check out that list and you can see a bunch of way better Star Trek podcasts. Yeah. So uh, I, I just that want, are on that list. I just wanted you guys to know that like. I'm aware that I need to be wackier. So if in your head you were thinking, Dan's not being so wacky you've, enough. You've, 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 I wasn't thinking that. Yeah, you've concluded on your own that you need to be more wacky. That's fine. But now you are warning us that you are going to be wacky. No, no, you're warning us that you are aware yes. 
that you need to be more wacky. Yeah, so you're not sitting there thinking, man, I hope he knows. Do you think he knows? You know, like he needs to be more wacky. I thought you were warning us just in case we were confused as uh, to your more chirpy behavior. How about well, if you, you like yell at me every time I make a noise that like is too much noise for the podcast? It's like there's that there's that rumbling again. He's 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 crackling that, that rapper. <laughs> and I <laughs> he's that just, just scream at you. He's like, God damn it, he's doing it. <laughs> Oh, that's his wacky sound. Oh, Dan has a wacky Moog synthesizer. Or you can just make your own wacky sounds. What kind of... Can I go, Whoa, Jesse! Well, that'll be like... You're, I'll be like, Whoa, Jesse! <laughs> that'll be my thing. When you make a loud, crinkly noise, I'll go, Whoa, Jesse! So, to everyone out there who has seen us on the uh, feed spot top 60 Star Trek podcast list feed bag. and is listening is listening to this as the first episode uh, well there you go please uh, we will please, eventually please talk about listening. Star Trek mark um, this date listening. as the date I became more wacky okay <laughs> all right rogue planet yes Star Trek Enterprise that was that was a great that was a great um um segue you made earlier by the way what the quesadilla <laughs> Yeah, with Rogue Planet. Now you've undermined that by, uh, yeah, yeah. by bringing undermined it up. It a whole yeah. bunch. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm getting better. Season one, episode 18. It so starts towards out the with end. a funny photo shoot with like a funny looking old school camera. Yeah. Just snapping pictures. Well, it was funny because that camera just looked like a camera. Looks like a camera. Yeah, I it's think like, they put why some, they have a camera? They put yeah, some duct tape just... on a normal digital camera yeah, from yeah. Then, they that did. time. They made it look extra shiny or yeah, something. Yeah, isn't that what they did in Battlestar Galactica? They they galactified weapons. They basically took normal things and added doorknobs and and. Yeah, and or took away doorknobs, and, and, whatever you, well, whatever the what yeah, they look like. Well, yeah, like like guns, they would add like a banister to it, or a gun or something. It would look wacky <laughs> or something. Um, Netflix confused me because they list this as season one, episode seven, seventeen, because they count the two parters. It's a classic error. Yeah, and that well, error is not. There was that fair. South Park argument yeah. about that. Well, the, is that with like the next generation? You know how how many episodes are the original series? You know, seventy nine. That was the South Park. The, yeah. Episode, yeah. Um, it comes up all the time, and not just not just with Star Trek, and it annoys a lot of people because Netflix has chosen one convention. The fans, you know, other networks will choose a different convention. So, what are you going to do? It can be confusing, but I guess for the purposes of Netflix. It's too late now. You yeah. should have seen it before listening to this. Yeah. Uh, episode but, 17. You can figure it out from the title. Right. So, yeah. So he's got, I noticed that too, that he's got that, that camera, that future camera that looks just like a camera from that the era in which it was filmed. And did they even do anything to it? Did they put an extra a flap on it or something? It, it looked like maybe they drew on it with that silver it looks real Sharpie shiny. or something. It looks yeah. real shiny like it was yeah. C-3PO's camera. Yeah. Yeah. So what's cool though is it's an example of it two two things. First of all, Enterprise is really good at the world building around like the they're they're doing a lot of firsts, you know. Mm -hmm. So they're documenting it all. There's a lot of documenting and and taking this photo as an example of that. Trying to trying to frame literally like the image of what to represent this mission to people back at home. But I also like that it kind of showed that art. You know, Archer didn't really want to do this yeah, and I mean I, he doesn't like being the center of attention he just honestly likes to go out exploring shit yeah so I, and I was wondering why he was so grumpy and I guess it was it's not too hard to figure out but at the same time it's just kind of like come on man it, it takes it takes a minute to do it's not a big deal um, so yeah. I guess it's just the principle of him being uncomfortable about knowing that in the future he's going to like I, yeah, I think he doesn't like that yeah I think he wanted to be the captain not to be a you know, famous it's, but I mean, we could say that it's true of all the captains in some way, but I think, you know, he's acutely not interested in being the center yeah. of attention. Of course he keeps being thrust into the center of attention by his own actions. Um, you know, I mean, he's, he's the captain of this ship that's going out farther than humans have and, ever really gone before. And, and to Paul was, was like sort of, sort of monitoring the scene. Like, like she always looks like she's a cat who doesn't understand like why people exist around <laughs> yeah. her. She's like looking at him like what is what is this bullshit? Yeah, you know. Like, it, well, I mean, human behavior is somewhat perplexing. <laughs> yeah, so it's like when you look at your cat and start doing weird goobly noises at it, and it just kind of stares at you. Why are you doing that? The opening's theme, right? We talked about this when we discussed the uh, pilot, uh, Broken Bow. Um, Broken Bow. Okay, Everyone's talked about the uh, the theme. We don't need to go into oh, our, our thinking on it. You know, <laughs> it's been a long road. <laughs> I, I was skip. I was skip the intro whenever it gets to that. Yeah, <laughs> it starts playing, and I'm like, and then like Netflix gives me the option to skip it. And I'm yeah, like, well, I'm not gonna I, sit I've, here and listen and listen well, to this shit. So. And I'm not gonna <laughs> sit here listen to the to this. <laughs> not gonna waste my time. Um, but I sit and listen to it because just to do it. And, and I you're always a good sport. And I always <laughs> thank you. 
They always say there to here instead of here to there. That's dumb. That's they're forcing a rhyme there. It's like there to here. That's stupid. Um, and then they Isn't go it a Rod Stewart song though. I don't know I officially. It was, yeah. It, is yeah, it? it yeah. It definitely sounds in the style of such. Some other dudes singing it. But. Okay. And then it goes. It's been a long time, but my time is finally near. That's dumb. My um, it's been a yeah. long time, but my time is finally near. Couldn't you say something else like? It's been a long while, but my time is finally yeah, here. Yeah, too many, too many times. Yeah, too many that's times. Right. And the and the the last thing um, when he goes, and I will see my dream come alive at last. I will touch the sky. Sounds like I will touch this guy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's so, the part I like. Yeah, and um, <laughs> I like that too. Rod Stewart. Um, the end. The end music is good though, because yes. it, it, yeah, it has a, a tight little guitar lick. It's like yeah. And by the third season, they had a drum beat to the opening, which I think it helps a little helps. bit. Yeah. The, it, <laughs> You know, I, I'm less aggravated these days or with a faster, the theme song faster drum beat anyway. than I used to be. Right. So when it first came on, like I really couldn't stand it. It was, it was upsetting. Oh, yeah. Even though I enjoyed the show, but it was a bit of a turnoff. It's not such a turnoff to me now. It's I'm, I'm almost nostalgic yeah, for it. Like you can be nostalgic for things. I think for me, the aggravating thing about the opening theme is that you take the theme away the concept for the opening is brilliant. Like mm-hmm. the, the the idea of showing moments in history, you know, of flight, you know, from the Wright brothers on through first contact and then the launch of the, the NX-1 Enterprise. That's really cool. That's like a really clever concept. It fits the show. It, it fits you into the show. And then it's, you're just distracted by this like lyrical music, which is, un, uh, I think, unnecessary. Yeah. And they could have even gone a better way with that kind of music if they were going to go that direction. But um, yeah, they were trying to do some kind of relatable thing to make it more. Because down, right down to we've talked about this before about their um, uniforms, you know. Yeah. Looking, and so I guess they were trying to be more re- It was the 2000 vibe. I mean, this came and out in 2001, seemed- but the show was conceived of and, and developed you know 2000 2000 and it seems even more bizarre now that with discovery and picard they kind of went back to the 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 old kind of yeah. style of things and so it's like what is this and discovery does a similar thing a similar concept is a more architectural drawing concept but it's the same the, co- idea of building something you know building to something which i quite like i'm a big fan of yeah, the discovery the, the music though is is back to sort of true these orchestral kind of yeah. kind of roots and that's sort of what i was i was that was the enterprise was the only one where they used like a like a pop song yeah not not like orchestral kind of music right right so yeah, but yeah like you said though the actual imagery though is, is i think is and really and of course famously roddenberry wrote lyrics to the and alexander right, courage did, yeah. tos theme because he just wanted to make money <laughs> is it called like beyond the stars or something like something that out beyond the stars? yeah the word the, the words are not great i don't remember this yeah you can it, isn't there an episode where somebody sings it there like, might be like Uhura, possibly. I don't know. I don't recall. We have to, we'd have to Google that using the Google. Isn't there one where the alien takes over Picard and he sings some kind of like drink drunken yeah. shant, drunk shanty thing yeah. or whatever, and everyone's like, "This is this is really." It was a really uncomfortable scene. In, yeah. Like, no, that's a great episode. That's yeah. a fun one. Yeah. Uh, so Rogue Planet. Let's get into it. Main main bulk of the story. Rogue planets are a thing. They are a thing. Um, and you know, this is classic Star Trek. It's like, it's a very straightforward, not particularly nuanced, not particularly subtle, right. but well, well and tightly constructed, well acted, uh, uh, sci-fi story with a nice little moral tale about, you know, don't make assumptions, which is a good message. And of course, Scott Bakula kicks ass. Yeah. yeah he's pretty good. I mean, is the don't make assumptions, was that really the message though? That I don't know. Like... Don't kill things that are alive and think about stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it seemed like they it wasn't sure what they were going for with the message there because on, on the like the the reason Archer decided to finally save he had even admitted it at the end. He's like he goes, "She may just be something I envisioned a long time ago, but I'll be damned if I'm going to let anyone shoot her." He admits that he won't let that- them shoot her because he's because she's the like the focus of a memory he had about a fictitious girl who was all pretty in a poem, you know. So, right. so it's not exi- that's like she knows that's what she's doing. To, she's making that happen. So it's basically like if you have some emotional connection to something, then it's okay. Then then you need to save it. Basically. So the question we'll have to otherwise it's delicious pig meat. The question we'll have to answer by the end of today's podcast is. I mean, I guess I'm a hypocrite though too. So is whether uh, Archer would have been as amenable. If uh, if she had stayed slug creature, let's not answer that now. Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's save that. Let's, let's find save that out till later. Well, okay. First of all, this story I think is a good example of how Enterprise, particularly at the beginning, was really really good at focusing on this idea of 
ex- exploration and the human need to explore and using to Paul as a sort of killjoy mm-hmm. saying like, you know, trying to tamp down all their stuff. This, I mean, at the end of this episode, she says, you know, uh, something along the lines of, you know, never stop pursuing something, even if it seems unattainable. Yeah. She yeah. says never stop seeking what seems unattainable. And yeah. that's what I was kind of like, is that the lesson? I don't know if that's really what, how that's really, I think it's applies. a side lesson, yeah. but, but, but it, enterprise was really good with the exploration aspect. They really went hardcore non-cynically into the human need Mm -hmm. for and desire for exploration. It's not that, I mean, TOS of course had that and all the Star Trek have that to some degree or another, but it's, it was an overt theme in enterprise and had a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, episodes really focused on that. And what's interesting also to consider is that there's a bit of an arc there because when they first start exploring, like through much of the first season up till right around here is they're just balls out exploring. They're like, there's a fucking planet. Let's check it out. There's a weird star. Let's check it out. There's some derelict spaceship. Let's check it out. They're just like checking shit out, like kind of with an ab- abandon. Yeah. And because the guys were like, what are you doing here? It's like, well, we're just here to explore. Yeah. We're yeah. just, che- we're just, just checking out this just, dark we, ass we planet. We saw it and we came here yeah, with we, a fucking we, ghost ship for all we know. Yeah, yeah. We we almost got shot by some hunters, you know? You know. So what, ha- what starts to happen though, is as they go through these various adventures, uh, especially some of the more political adventures that they, they start be, being a little less gung ho. They start learning a little bit that yeah, exploration is cool, but to Paul's not like totally wrong. Like we could, we can go about this slightly more sensibly. And then that's, that's one of the arcs that kind of subtly happens uh, across certainly the first few seasons of, of enterprise, um, which is cool. Also they do, they go into a lot of questions about um, the, uh, the potentially damaging effects or the the the, the his, history altering effects of exploration in that even though you are you know these characters are sincere bright eyed they just want to learn more about science and the universe and the world and meet people they're still affecting people's lives every time they go to a planet you know like you know they leave behind a communicator or something you know here they disrupt the hunting patterns of this culture on the other hand they're also saving the lives of a sentient being great but they're still affecting things that would not have been affected if they hadn't right. shown up. And so that's, that's a lot of that is inherent in the, in the enterprise stories. So this is like pre prime directive. Well, well, so um, this, the first season um, it, it's in a first season episode, um, according to Wikipedia, uh, dear doctor, Jonathan Archer says, he goes, someday my people are going to come up with some sort of a doctrine, something that says what we can and can't do out here, should right. and shouldn't do. But until someone tells me that they've drafted drafted this directive, I'm going to have to remind myself every day that we didn't come out here to play God. So that was uh, Dear Doctor, which is... And, the, and they, they didn't come up with that stuff till like after they, what, the Klingons or the Romulans? It was like, it was like way later. Yeah, I, I think what it, it, like it, it wasn't 13. until the yeah it wasn't until the Federation. I don't know if they I forget in Enterprise if they did it before the official founding of so, the Federation. So this was episode eighteen, and this uh, this quote came from Dear Doctor in episode thirteen. So this was yeah. even before they went to the planet. So he's still just kind of like, well, whatever, fuck it, you know. Well, he's he 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 doesn't say he won't do it. He says he'll yeah. have to remind himself that he's not yeah. God. That gives you a lot of wiggle room. Yeah, it's for true. what actions you're gonna you're gonna take. I liked Malcolm Reed's little contest. Oh yeah, it was weird and subtle, but that the show was pretty good at that. It was slow with the character building, but they added a little stuff each episode. And then this one is like Malcolm Reed is a fucking champion at getting those merit badges, and he even shows up the the grand Jonathan Arth- Archer. Yeah, and he's got an exobiology already. Yeah, he had to bring that up. Like he wasn't an. I mean, he oh, couldn't. I've already, already got one. it. I mean, when they when they were talking about first, yeah, first of all, you could tell that Malcolm was trying to take over the 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 hunt or the 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 voyage through that forest because of his confidence, and then, you know, of course, Archer turned it into kind of. a... Wasn't pissed. he like I'm still the captain or something? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so he kind of like Archer kind of kicked off a pissing contest. Well, Archer had every right to, but anyways, point being is like. Malcolm was already in that situation. He is like, you know, talking. And so they're talking about the rare badges. But then later when Archer's like, well, if only we saw we had a, you'll get your badge in exobiology. And then Malcolm has to bring that up again. That time he was really twisting that knife in there and uh, his, being kind of a, a little bit of a dick. His at character that point. is awesome. I, I mean, you know, you get to see a lot of him in this episode, which is great. Um, there's another episode, I'm um, forgetting the title right now, but it's where um, 
you find out that his parents are basically his dad basically is mad at him for not joining the British Royal Navy. Oh yeah, and joining Starfleet instead. Right. Yeah, because his whole family has been in the British Royal Navy for however many generations, so he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder to prove himself. Uh, but are, is the British Royal Navy like going out into space? Like, no, that's the problem. They're just they're he's just like I want to go to space. <laughs> he's was, like I just want to float around on a ship. So was was that the episode that also kind of. I think it was, I, think, well, I don't know if it was Hoshi or who it was that was trying to find out more about him. There was an episode where they were trying to find, it was some yeah, character was trying to find. for his birthday. Yeah, it was for his birthday. Make his, make his favorite kind of cake. Yeah, yeah. And that was the episode you d- sort of, they sort of addressed the fact that we don't know anything about like this Malcolm character. He's kind of interesting because he, he's, he, he's a personality similar almost to Bashir. Um, but you know, but, but, but he's. Mashir is really open and 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 yeah, stuff he's like not that. as bright bright eyed and bushy tailed. He, yeah, he's not as excited. No, so he's actually very different than Bashir in a lot of ways. But there's something about his his role in the show kind of reminds me is this guy that kind of shows up and is kind of rubs you the wrong way. He's a very bit. Com- yeah, he's very competent um, and in his area of expertise. You know, he's all into weapons and stuff, which I think is another thing that can kind of throw you off if you're in the Star Trek mold. And he's a little un-Star Trekky. You know, he's he, eager to go on the hunt. Yeah, I he, promise not to kill anyone. He he was like the ta- he's a tactical engineer, I think. Right? Yeah, and he handles you know he handles the weapons and stuff. He's that's what he's into. Yeah, and then what is it? Tucker is the just the engineer. Yeah, he's the yeah. he's the chief engineer. And the Mal- Malcolm, they didn't really have a tactical engineer in. TNG. Well, War, they, Worf, Tasha Yar, they were yeah. the tactical they were, officers. They called them security, though. Was, is it the... They were, yeah. I, I, they were security and tactical. At least Worf and, and Yar were. Reed actually yeah. helps develop the concept of Starship security over the course of Enterprise, because it's one of the, sort of one of the projects they have him evolve into, you know, where he he's the one who comes up with the idea that, you know, you need to, <laughs> you need to organize some of this shit. So it was Silent Enemy, uh, which is uh, season episode twelve of season yeah. one, and it is Hoshi. She's making plans for his his birthday. So I thought it was a very ambitious thing for them to set this on a on a rogue planet, a dark planet, because that's really hard to do on TV, mm-hmm. uh, especially when there's other than on the ship. I mean, everything's in darkness now. I know, of course, they come up with clever ways to light the scenes with starlight. But they couldn't even fight it in space. The oh. fire. Oh, and the ship, the 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 Enterprise orbiting the planet looked badass. Mm-hmm. I, th- I thought yeah, it looked really great. Yeah, cool. But but th- just from a production standpoint, it was impressive that you were able to follow the action with because you know they had like the glowing the glowing night vision stuff. Like they gave you clues as to yeah. how to follow the action. The hunters had fancy ultraviolet. They had some badass night vision. Yes, yeah. they have some red glasses, and Malcolm only had some green middling like, green middling fucking very, night vision. Like half a half a swim goggle. Or it something. Ha- yeah, that was <laughs> all. It was, was, was Borg like that starfleet <laughs> yeah. issue it was just for um it was night- monocle it was just it was a it was just for night vision and um and they had the whole shebang with ultraviolet nobody had yeah. um or infrared infrared that's what i was going for what, nobody has the ultraviolet glasses i don't know if that was but the old ultraviolet yeah the ultraviolence uh star trek generations that was from star trek generations <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was from <laughs> malcolm mcdowell's character in uh in, yes. in star trek generations oh man so what do you get with ultraviolet that's why they hate that. ultraviolet image in ultraviolet vision you get to see like stains on things like yeah, you see a lot of <laughs> like, a lot of like hotel you stains yeah. Yeah. Like, you get to see everyone's dandruff <laughs> there's a bunch of dandruff over there like, uh, oh, stay away from it. that guy he doesn't shower all well, right maybe that's what we need in these 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 days of 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 uh confusion and i don't know hey hey audience do you think dan's being wacky enough Oh, wow. He promised us wacky, and I don't know. He's he's so a little far, bit low I energy think right uh, now. I think I'm a little oh, wackier so far. Wow. Those hunters had a predator cam. Predator, predator, predator cam on Monday. <laughs> Bottom of the hour. I don't know. The wacky numbers went way up. Just I, <laughs> I know about mixed metaphors. I don't know what you, 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 you just did mixed sort of examples. Um, But, all right. Aliens. You mentioned the aliens. The Eskin. That's all the wackiness I need for the uh, next bit. Uh, okay. Um, these the guys. Eskin. Eskra. 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 Eska. Eska. Eskra. 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 Sorry. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the. You look it's at the Eska. It's the Eska. Eska. Yeah. All and right. so we saw. They said there were like six of them, but we only saw three of them. I thought they said there was like six of them. I could have. I think we saw four. Four. All I know. Time. There were three that we mainly dealt with. Yeah. Which was Damrus, Shirat. 
That's and Burzan. Like, and Burzan. Sherrod, if you if you take out the R, the A, and the H, you get shit. All right. Now these three actors are are brilliant, like character actors that you've seen in a million different things. Yeah. And they've all all of them have done some other Star Trek. So first of all, the the most easily recognizable to me was Eric Pierpoint. Uh he's Sherrod because he's in everything most i most recently Alien remember him Nation. as the um he was the chief of police in parks and recreation oh yeah that's right he's really good at that um he was on voyager's barge of the dead which is a uh, milana torres uh focused episode but he's also in um deep space nine he's in uh, uh for the uniform where he plays like a, i think a federation guy which is a great episode of deep space nine and he's also in what was the other one um he's in tng's liaisons mm. Um, in mm. that, and he was also on Alien Nation on the TV show of the Alien Nation. Lays on what? Uh, Alien Nation, the one where they got drunk on spoiled milk, and the men could get pregnant. Yeah, yeah, remember exactly. that show? Yeah, I do. That's I, I just remember it, it, but I never watched it. That was around the time they had the War of the Worlds television show. War of the Worlds. Yeah. Uh, then there was um, Connor O'Farrell, uh, who's another guy mm. you've seen in a million things. Like um, he's first, he's in Enterprise later. Um, and then, uh, not, oh, actually I forgot not Colin Farrell yes. or Will Farrell, Connor O'Farrell. I forgot to mention that Eric Pierpoint also is an enterprise in, I think season four, he plays He's in like a bunch of episodes, mm -hmm. different character. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, Connor O'Farrell, he was on another episode of enterprise. He was on X files. He was on CSI. Um, but where I remember him most was on the DS nine episode, little green men where, uh, quark Rom uh, and Nog go back in oh, time yes. to Roswell, yes. and he's yeah, he's one of the fun. army. He's like the army guy. He's like one of the army guys they're dealing with. That, that episode was a good time. Yeah, that was a fun episode. And then the other guy is um, Keith Zarabajka. Zarabajka. Like Zarabajka or something. Zarabajka. Yeah. Probably yeah. Yeah, Damaris. Because that dude is all over television, and uh, he does a lot of voiceovers for video games. Yeah. Like all the video games, like all the Star Wars cartoons and stuff he did um, voices for. He was on X-Files. He was in like the Elder Scrolls games. Yeah, Dishonored. Elder Scrolls. He did the Lord, Lord of the, the Rings. Fantasy Mafia, World of Warcraft. He's in a lot of yeah, shit. Yeah, most of Fallout, the Star Wars games. Of Fallout 76 and 4. But when, when you see his face, you're like, oh, that, he's that evil guy that's in all those evil things. Mm -hmm. He's always playing some creepy evil guy. He's got that voice. It sounds like, it's, yeah, it sounds that like that, that woman from, now I sound like Rob from Bob's Burgers, like the lunch lady, or no, the teacher. Hey, Tina. Yeah. You know, but he, that, who's, who's, she's got, it's more, more like, it's more like Liv Tyler, kind of like, who's that, who's that, who's that woman? <laughs> yeah, who's like fucking Liv Tyler. Who's that woman who's in the- Frodo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> In the Expanse, she plays the ambassador of Earth. Oh yeah, and she's also I, in Daredevil, I think, too, or something. She plays someone, or one of those Marvel Netflix Marvel uh, movies. She plays someone's yeah, mom right, or something. Yeah. Yes, she, I know. Yeah, deep, deep voice. Yeah, and they both this sort of this sort of luscious, deep, <laughs> air, airy, windy kind of what's the word I'm looking for kind of voice, and it's like it's like vocal fry to the extreme. Yeah, vocal fry turns sexy and, and wise. <laughs> Um, but Turned upside down. He just looks just like her. And in this episode, he looked like he had a freaking like mealworm on his face. Yeah, that's, I think that they were supposed nose. to. That was his, no his, his nose just looked like a fucking scaly ass worm on his face. They probably just glued a worm. He's an alien, man. <laughs> <laughs> fucking worm heads, spoon heads, fucking lamb head. <laughs> the worm voice. Worm voice. Worm voice. He was in the Dark Knight, Argo, but Transformers. You mentioned. Laser uh, beak. You mentioned. Uh, <laughs> Liv Tyler, and and that brings us to the Wraith lady, who, yes. given the timing, this really feels to me like they dressed her up as a Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings style elf, because she's got the ethereal light, the kind of long, stoic face, um, doesn't move her face around a lot, and, and it really was evoking... Liv Tyler from uh, from Lord of the Rings playing uh, Arwen. Ah, speaking of Liv Frodo. Tyler. Frodo. Um, she's also, she seems to be in a, she seems to have been in a bunch of things as well. Yeah. She was in insurrection. Yeah. I think a, a small, smallish part in insurrection. She was, um, Stephanie, Ni Stephanie Nisnik. Yeah, that's right. Stephanie Nisnik. Sliders. Wasn't that with, um, she was in Dr. Queen Ju Medicine Woman. John Rhys Davies. She was in Frasier and Jag. Wait, St what was the show we were just talking about? St sliders? sliders. Sliders. That was that guy who looks like, um, what's his name from, um, the Hogan family. 
um, yeah, Paul Hogan. Right, right. The, yeah. Uh, Arrested J- Development. J- Jason Bateman. Yeah, it looks oh, like Jason Bateman. Yeah. He look kind of looks like Jason Bateman, but he's not right. Jason Bateman. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what, a, what a great that anecdote. Guy. It's like, it's like. <laughs> I know who you're talking about. It's like, what is that guy's name? Aiden Quinton. Is that his name? Is there an yeah, act? yeah. Why are he, you bringing up Aiden Quinton? He looks like a poor man's Bill Paxton or something. Yeah. Or is it the other way around? It could be the other way around. Yeah. Anyway, she was in. Um. Yeah, she was in. Uh, yeah, she was in Insurrection as Param. Okay. All right, so then the guy who directed this episode is Alan Croker. Get the and, fuck out. No, for real, Alan Croker. The Alan Croker. You sure it wasn't Alan Norge? No, it wasn't. It was Alan Croker. For all you, was, for all you uh, Norge fans? Nor- Croker Norge fans here in Virginia. Oh, Croker Norge, yes. That's Virginia, Virginia, right? Norge. That is a locality. It is Virginia, yeah. It's a locality. It's two localities. Two localities blended together it's like Minneapolis and St. Paul. Sort of near Williamsburg, I think. Hmm. So Alan Croker is like a legacy Trek director. Um, he He's a Trek rector. But here's the weird thing. Okay. He did 13 episodes of Deep Space Nine. He did Ow. 13 episodes of Voyager. And he directed 13 episodes of Enterprise. That's it. <laughs> and, and the legend of Kootenai Brown. Apparently. Like, why, why is it 13? Is that the contract? Yeah. Is that some weird thing? That is a weird thing. Is he superstitious in a weird way? You know, anyway, I've worked with big data before, and you'll find that coincidences are more prevalent than you would think. But this, this I, I read that some, in a book, and I agree with Chuck. it. But I think that's a pretty strong coincidence. I, it's you, you, it's, <laughs> it's like kept hiring him. They yeah. liked his work. Was it at thirteen? Was he just like, that's enough? Yeah. I can't take this anymore. He might be a weird guy. This and, is you fucking. You got a worms. Uh, we're turning into people, people turning into worms. What the fuck is this show? Yeah. From I'm going to go back to Dallas. And every time he thinks he's going to be like, okay, maybe I'm different now. Maybe I'm different now. <laughs> ah, they got a lady running the ship now. Okay, it's different. Ah. No, I still hate this shit. Ah. <laughs> it's still weird. It's still weird for me. <laughs> Anyway, Alan Croker, good director. Um, I, I didn't look up all the other <laughs> track episodes he did, but he did a very good job, I thought, in this one. Um, one of the things I noticed, what I, I just wanted to comment on was two things. First of all, the actual production of the show is still very trekky in yeah. that you can tell it's just like a bunch of potted plants and styrofoam like rocks and shit. It even looks more trekky than Nor- Enterprise normally looks, I but, feel. But well, the thing is, because like, Enterprise was able to do some like, they did. They started doing a little bit more like going outside and shit. Like they but, had that episode where um, that he was on that desert planet with yeah. the guard from Shawshank Redemption yeah. and they played some like shirtless tackle ball or yeah, something. You some know? sort of futuristic highlight. Yeah, and that looked more like enterprise Yeah, I thought. Well, it, it's, it's Enterprise is an interesting transition because it's... It still does this Trek style styrofoam rock stuff, but it's doing it at the top of the fucking styrofoam rock game, right? They like advanced the technology as far as fucking styrofoam rocks are going to go. And so it's, it's It's one that kind of looked like a penis a little bit. Well, that's on purpose, of course. Okay. Uh, The, the the (laughs) subtle undercurrent of uh, homosexuality is strong and in all of Star Trek. Good. I'm fine. Um, That's good. That's why it's awesome. No, uh, the, uh, the production value is it's just interesting because like you said they, they they're already they're filming in HD and it's widescreen and they're going outside more the special effects are improved but they're still doing some of this trekky stuff so it's a transition thing right because you don't really see that stuff so much on uh on discovery or Picard you know these newer installments they they were, were beyond all that now into the CGI technology high high cinematic style but you can see the beginnings of it here and one thing I noticed, they were doing a lot of handheld camera mm. and they were even doing something that you start to see, frankly, too much of on Discovery, which is the camera, like all like walking in and around the whole conversation going in and out and all around. Yeah, I actually was thinking about that when they were talking about after Dr. Flox found the deal with this, these things and, and Captain Archer was basically saying, uh, well, maybe we can mask their fear scent or something. Yeah. That whole discussion, I think, was going around. And then early, I think, I think it was earlier when they were, uh, before they went on the hunt, um, when they were in the camp of the, of the Eska. And they they were showing off their fancy iPad, <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, the camera was really kind of like, kind of like poking in and pulling out and like walking around in a circle. It was very mobile, um, un- unusual for Star Trek uh, up till that point. Though the morphing effects still kind of looked a little DS Nine era, like, but not yeah, that it really maybe mattered. not, maybe not even as good. Yeah, you know, I actually watched it a few times when she morphed back into a bug, and it just kind of looked like they took the form and squished it and kind of faded the face and the. Uh, there weren't any. Fe- Features really no. being morphed. Or I was having a lot of fun doing this frame by frame and, oh, yeah. and getting goofy little. It was kind of like, Her- like Hercules style. There was a. This happens a lot when you have these 
jumps forward in technology, but oh, Vizina and Hercules. Oh yeah, those were awesomely cheesy. <laughs> when they switched over to HD, every so much was improved, but that had drawbacks, right? And one of the drawbacks was that the special effects they were relying on weren't hidden by the poor quality of the of the. Uh, broadcast you yeah know? i remember they used to be all worried about you know how everyone would look so ugly in hd because you'd see all their blemishes but i yeah. don't remember anyone really talking about the special effects thing i guess that's the one they didn't really predict no and well. that's but and that's something that definitely happened and then they had to yeah. catch up you know and then they got better at it and the you special were, effects improved you were talking about and this might be unrelated but it's a long line of special effects the hobbit when the hobbit was released yeah. in, in super high frame you said some of the special effects i only saw the third one in super mode and it was too weird it was like watching yeah. a weird bbc play or something that didn't and some people would argue it only looked that way. It only looked weird because you weren't used to it because we've been trained yeah. in the language of film. Yeah. But what what did happen on the Hobbit uh, is that what, at least when they were put first putting together was that the cameras they were using are these great cameras, but great cameras. The way they the way they uh, these digital red cameras I think is what they used. But the problem was is how their sensors picked up red or didn't pick up red or whatever. So they had to use the makeup on the people. They had to like overcolor it. I forget if they had to overcolor it red or something. But so in other words, when you're looking at the characters, they looked weird because you would have you know how it would translate into the camera. Now, that in and of itself is nothing unusual. You always have to do that. You had to do that with all sorts of film cameras and stuff too. What on stage requires way more light and other things than what actually gets into the camera. However, it still it takes a lot of practice to do that and I think that that caused a lot of problems on the Hobbit where the special effects were just not looking good in that high frame rate. Yeah, you're saying some of the like the f- dragon fire and stuff or and something we, and fireball or wiggling something. the ears and so, like like the the that's why they went to, you know, a lot of digital makeup and eh, with <laughs> debatably not great yeah. effect i think you see a little of that here now of course the cool part about star trek is you don't have to care about that yeah it's true you really don't have to give a shit <laughs> by definition it's all better than it used to be it's all an improvement so yeah. you know and as long as the story they're telling is interesting and you know this particular story doesn't blow <laughs> blow your mind out of the water but it's 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 fun and it's interesting and it's really it's got that trek flavor to it trek flavor taste it's really good tastes good like noodles it's a good flavor like noodles spicy ramen noodles that you put pork belly and eggs on look i'm into eating pork i don't have any emotional connection to them do you want to <laughs> eat one of those those drajin pigs do you have any problem yeah. with eating pork you don't have any, see any moral i mean i uh, that's a discussion that I'm i a, see all sorts of moral problems with it i still do it and yeah. I, I might feel bad about it and i hope to feel re- bad enough about it one day that i stop doing it but it i'm still not taste good i'm not doing no. that yet well, bacon tastes good. Pork chop <laughs> tastes good. Sewer rat may taste like pumpkin pie, but I, I wouldn't know because I wouldn't eat the filthy motherfucker. That's good, man. That's a quote from Babe Pig in the City. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. It was when he got into the city and he was riding around with his buddy. It's like when they found him next to the warp drive ship taking a piss because he was hungover in Babe in the City. Yeah. yeah. Oliver Cromwell. Okay. Yes, yes. Oliver, the famous actor, <laughs> Oliver Cromwell, <laughs> born in 1599, died in 1658. September? <laughs> It depends which one you're talking about, as Jesse noted to me, because uh, there's been a couple of Oliver Cromwells who have inserted themselves into the the annals of British history, <laughs> like a big fake rock. Piece. Well, yeah, there was well, there was somebody else named Cromwell. Yeah, it maybe wasn't, it wasn't Oliver Cromwell. It was, all, it was like Thomas Cromwell. Oh yeah, Thomas Cromwell. I was, I was about to say Peter Cromwell Peter. because I'm a fucking moron. Peter Cromwell. <laughs> hey there, I'm Peter Cromwell. How's it going? Um, <laughs> so we were talking about this because we were talking. Oh, Trey, 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 Drajan, Drajan, the Drajan pig. So I wasn't clear on the presentation of the Drajan. Were they were the wraiths imitating the Drajan, or were the Drajan and the wraiths the same thing? Right. Was it was the was the wraith always just pretending to be some other kind of yeah, wi- wildlife? Yeah, because they knew they turned into other shit, right? I, they, I think that they knew they were shapes. Yeah, they, I, they I, knew they were. Yeah, they knew they were. They were messing with them. The this yeah. episode did not delve that deeply because I. Th- I agree. There's some confusion there. On the other hand, we know they were eating some Drajan at the beginning. We don't think they were eating Wraith, right? Probably we don't think they no. fed them Wraith. Yeah, it so, seems like they were eating that. But so. maybe, maybe, maybe Wraith tastes that. Although I guess, what happens if you kill a Wraith? Does it turn back into its worm form? Yeah, it's a good question. Is the dude yeah. on the the worm, dude on the ship escargot? Escargot. Like Tucker, he was like a, a, a Drajan's like a like a big dirty pig, and it tastes like one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Fox is like, well, I don't know. If that's a weird pig or something. Oh, yeah, that must have been. Pig. That must have been a Dr. Fox. Most unusual Dr. Fox. pig. Most, yeah, it's a most unusual pig. <laughs> and he says pig off. Like pig. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> I really like that. I like Fox. I think he's great. I don't think it's fair to compare him to Neelix. I think it's just because he's nah. a weird squad alien. Yeah. People compare. Nah, he's great. I, he's, I love Fox. Yeah. He's, he's 100%. John Billingsley Neelix. is a great actor. I mean, yeah. Ethan Phillips is a great actor, too. I really like the, the Neelix actor. I'm just... <laughs> oh, yeah. Not a fan of he's Neelix. He's in great other, yeah. other stuff. But, uh... So, um, so, yeah, I guess when they ate the Drajan, um, I guess it was just... That was legit Drajan. Because yeah. it would have... I guess it would have morphed back into a, a, a weird tapeworm thing. Or not flatworm. What are those kind of worms called that look like that like uh, a flatworm it looks yeah, like a flatworm flat it was a semi-flatworm semi-flat yeah. <laughs> it's a semi-flaccid worm Slimy, semi you know worms. it's i i think they just just they just they could have delved a lot more into this hole it can read your mind because you'd imagine a creature that can do that can use that to scare you it could use it to hide it could use it to do all sorts of things because it was already doing that to fool those other aliens and in, in on the previous excursions. Yeah. You, we could have seen it do things to other people. Because they said it could look like one of you. It could yeah, look like me. Right. Yeah. It could and have done more they, stuff. They talk about that. They don't, I guess they just decided they didn't have time or didn't want to go that deeply into it. Because you could have told, you could have shifted this into more of a horror story yeah. by having that. And then the twist, of course, is that the horrible creatures mm. are cool. Yeah, that would have been cool. So Because they, they, they were shapeshifters and they could read your mind. So they had a power of a, a beta Z and a, and a and a changeling, this so, or they, whatever. Even beta Zs aren't are only empathic; they can't actually. Well, no, read a it. lot of them can read your mind. Oh yeah, they can do yeah, the telepathy cause, thing. Because yeah. uh, Deanna Troy's like half She's human, half. So yeah, they, right. they can't so, create an illusion based on your subconscious, as thoughts. far as we know. Yeah. Right, because they can't shape shift. So yeah. that's why those things are probably one of the most powerful creatures, you know, in Trek. I mean, you think about the the what was it they called the tr- the changeling? How come pool? we never the, heard of the founders? Before. Founders. How can we know? So one of those versus one of Odo's, you know, I don't know. Odo's probably one of got- Odo's. One of Odo's. Odo's one probably- One of Odo's. One of Odo's. Um, one of Odo's. One of Odo's probably more wily, though. He's probably got a lot more, more wile in He's him. He's a wily guy. Yeah. So he could probably outsmart him, I would bet. They didn't seem too too smart. They were just kind of like- They didn't seem- <sighs> Well, that's another thing they didn't go deeply into. They 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 conveyed that, that this these creatures were sentient. She was able to hold a conversation, albeit a very sort of- you know, perhaps arbitrarily uh, uh, ethereal conversation. Mm. You know, it's like, how do you, how do I know you? And you know, yeah. she just sort of smiles. It's like, you know, you could tell. I mean, but they didn't because they're it's, yeah, the whole it's, poetry it's, side thing relating it to this poem was really weird, and I don't think that was the, out they, really. I, I I liked but, it, but it was yeah. it was Archer. It was a path of self discovery for Archer. It's, That's it's, why she couldn't tell that, him it, that came out of his brain. Yeah. yeah, I know, but it's just this. We it, I just I didn't. I think they if they were going to go as far as they did with it, they should have gone farther. Otherwise, mm. they shouldn't have made a whole scene to, of him talking about. I mean, that explains how like, she knows. It's just. I don't know why. I don't see how it's that important that she was able to delve into his well, mind. I mean, that's how she communicated with him and, and made him like help her s- stop the other guys. And, yeah, and it worked. And then, yeah, and then they. And but then he, even the Starfleet guys got to scram at the end, so everybody's but, a winner. But he could have just right then and there when she saw seen him, been like, "Hey, you're the one from that poem way back when." You know, you didn't have to draw it out. But I guess right, what you're saying, right. Patrick, is it is a journey of self discovery. So and it it does allow for I think I think it was even though I said this this episode was was not very nuanced and not particularly subtle. There, there are subtle moments in it. And I think one good line at the end that is very subtle is when, you know, Archer's recounting this to trip and then trip says, well, maybe that poem's been on your mind more than you realize. Captain, bro. Captain. And, and, and that, well, I don't know. Captain. That is, that's a, you know, that's a profound thing to say, you know, just reminding the captain that, you know, maybe he's been thinking about that, that, Search for perfection. Is that guy from Florida? Yeah. He's a trip is from Florida in the show, but you know that he's out there. Archer's out there exploring and maybe, you know, he's having some of that feeling that, that anxiousness of, I like this exploring, but I'm not finding what I kind of expected to find. You, you never will. If you're exploring the unknown, you, you cannot predict what will be out there. So there's going to be a disconnect between no matter what, there's going to be a disconnect between what you expected and what you actually find. And it could be that you, it's much more interesting interesting than you thought it could be that it's less interesting than you thought or a combination of the two um so i think it speaks to some of archer's anxieties 
uh, that he's been developing over the course. As, as I mentioned before, Archer, when he first starts out is like gung ho, like let's fucking just poke it, poke our noses into everywhere mm. after that desert planet. He's kind of like, Oh, that's yeah. fucked up. And then there's some other things that happen that he kind of starts to pull back a little on that. He still kind of, he still kind of loses his temper though, over things that when he realizes that something isn't right, he kind of like goes overboard. It's the whole show is a lot, focuses a lot around Archer, not sort of understanding things and constantly realizing why something is the way it is. Yeah. You know, yeah. so for, you know, at, at the beginning, um, when they were talk found the hunters, right. And they were all, everyone was wearing their laser tag gear and, um, they were in the, in the next to the next to the fire or whatever. Um, when, when they were hunters were describing what they did and then to Paul's like, Oh, so you go to the, um, to a plant and kill its indigenous li- yeah. life, wildlife or whatever. And, um, and they're like, oh, well, you know, so that that moment you kind of think, oh, to Paul's thinks they're fucked up, you know, but then it's and it's interesting, though, because like uh, Archer's just kind of like whatever. But then later on in the episode, when it's to Paul, you can clearly tell from the start that she's not into it. When Archer realizes that it's a pretty woman from a, a like a, a fake, you know, like from a poem, he's finally he's like, wait a minute, that's not right. And then she's like, you know, it's their sh- it's their business. We can't get into their, their shit. Yeah. We're not, we don't really have any right to do that. So. So it's kind of interesting that 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 she sort of re- is able to see the fucked up shit, but but also so you led to believe that she's kind of like way against it. But then at the other hand, she's just like, "This sucks," but whatever, fuck them. Uh, and you know? partly with the the issue with Paul, and it's not a bad issue. It's her characterization. I like it. It's it's and she sort of represents the Vulcan attitude, and and the Vulcan that starts to shift attitude from her experience with the humans over the course of the of the show. But to Paul is a killjoy. To Paul yeah. is that person at work where you're all like, "Oh, we've got this great idea. It's going to be a little complicated, but uh, what do you think?" And, and and she's that person who's like, "Nah, can't do it. Fun is irrelevant." And it's like, "What do you mean we can't do it?" It's like, "Nah, it just doesn't make. You know, just can't do it." It's like, "No, look, you're, it's <laughs> we not, don't have to." So we it's won't. not that your reasons are are incorrect. It's that you're not even considering that there might be options you have not thought of. And that's what I really enjoyed about the resolution to this episode is that again. There's no violence. They don't attack these dudes or anything. They use science and cleverness. He just to... attacks them with a snide remark at the end. Yeah, exactly. He's kind of an asshole <laughs> yeah. to him. That was yeah. maybe unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was watching that. I was kind of like, you know, you guys did not need to rub it in yeah. their face. Just find out that it worked and you can be like, yeah. oh, see you guys. <laughs> just be like, oh, no, or, or if you're going to be there, pretend, be like, oh, that's fucked up. Oh, yeah, yeah. shit. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, you guys got to go now. Oh, Everything yeah. condescend to them, but you're all like, huh. Hey, yeah, funny. Funny huh. that. Funny I guess, how that happens. I guess we're just bad luck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess, right, I guess yeah, we're yeah. just bad luck. Guess, uh, wink, <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Thanks for telling me all your secrets last night. It's a masking agent. Yeah, but it a is masking it, agent. It's a it's it's a Fox nice it. it's a nice example. You know, partly it's plot, right? But what it's in a from a meta perspective, it's a, it's another example of Star Trek saying here is an alternative, right? And it's an alternative. Uh, it's like Kirk with the Kobayashi Maru. It's like, I don't believe in a no win situation. Mm -hmm. There there is an alternative. If you get enough people, if you get enough creativity, if you get enough diversity of thought, you can come up with these ideas. Now, granted, this idea was fairly straightforward. Once we heard them say like, yeah, when you scare them, they (laughs) squirt out some juices and, and our sensors can sense the juices. Like, yeah, anybody could have figured out the plot. So that's where enterprise sometimes, you know, fall, fall short a little bit because it's not maybe not as interesting as solution as it, as it could be. But it's still it's a great nonviolent science based reason based solution that um, doesn't fuck over the hunter guys too much. They can still come and hunt, but they're going to have to hunt old school. It's kind of like if you uh, take the hunting rifles away from some dudes and say, like, all right, you can you can hunt the deer with knives. Right. Yeah. Um, you got to run this deer off the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. It, that's still fun. I mean, if you want, maybe not that fun. <laughs> it's a certain kind of fun. It's a different kind of fun. Uh, not that I advocate that, you know, uh, if you want to hunt, go hunting. Yeah. It's kind of reductive, um, I guess, when they're saying, because they're, 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 when they go, uh, you know, it's like when you corner them, they panic, especially the young ones, you know, it's <laughs> especially, like, oh, just, the, young especially the young ones, you know, when they're afraid, they emit a chemical signature. And I'm just thinking like, man, yeah, when they're afraid, it's not like they're like, Oh, I guess I must be afraid because I smell funny. Isn't it's that, like there's isn't that like all animals do. That? It's also the plot to Star Trek Six. Like that's and, how Star Trek Six is resolved, <laughs> right. the undiscovered country. When you know, but in that case, I did find it very clever. So in Star Trek Six, 
uh, uh, General Chang's uh, uh, Klingon warbird or Klingon bird of prey that can fire while cloaked, they figure out that it's expelling gas it's and they can, exhaust pipe. they can yeah, but they're that. not to see in this situation. And it's I'm not, have an it, it's just, pipe. it's just an example of the, the, of the hunters. It's kind of interesting how it's easy to dehumanize something. Cause they're not yeah. talking about ships. No, I agree. Sense. They're talking about something that is afraid and a fear is not just some random thing. It's, it's, We've all been afraid. It sucks, yes. you know. And um, and then he also <laughs> yeah, does the things like females can be very protective, especially when uh, protecting the nest. You know, that's also kind of like, yeah. How would you? What would you do if someone yeah. was trying right. to kill your it's, children? It's just like you know? every other animal that you yeah. Hunt, so like. I mean, we all have known that. It's just kind of interesting. I thought that was you know kind of it's it's cool. It kind of points out. It also kind of um talks about how Damrus has um kind of a personal vendetta in a way too because his father was and his father's Involved. although his father didn't die in it that's what i yeah. found interesting about yeah. the story which i i actually thought was a really clever choice they made in, in characterizing this guy because if the, if his father had died you would have been too sympathetic yeah maybe that was it by having his father like you know my father and one of his friends got away but it was you know it's fucked up he saw a bunch of people die you're like well your dad's still alive yeah, so right. like you, you're still being kind of an asshole here, like, because your dad almost died. Why are you going there now? Like, what about what's your like son going to think if you died? died? And then he came back, like, the next time and, like, <laughs> yeah, almost yeah. died again. And it's, yeah, and, uh, right. And I, th- I thought that was a, an interesting choice, too. And, right, I guess you don't want to make him seem too sympathetic, but at the same time, then what's sort of the point of that little story? I guess just how dangerous they are. Expresses yeah, how, just care. Yeah. Expe- expresses how dangerous they are without seeming too sympathetic. When they when they when they run in and, um, the final time and it turns into that tree, I like how they're just like, we'll get them. And they just all start shooting in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't shoot at the tree that's right in front of them. Yeah. You know, it actually reminded me. I don't know if you ever saw that cartoon from seventy seven, uh, nineteen seventy seven, uh, Wizards. It's kind of uh, like that that heavy metal. Oh, uh, I have a vague recollection. Yeah, it's one of those I've seen heavy metal recently, but one, not that one. Yeah, it's one of those creepy. There's a there's a scene in that there that reminds me of this this garden. It's like doing the same thing, just kind of shooting everything and missing the main target. Well, it's kind of funny. They. Uh, uh, they also have with the actors they chose one thing that I liked about this casting was those, those three main ones that you look at the guy um, uh, you know Eric uh, penis boopy yeah Eric Pierpoint he is really that one where you're the most sympathetic in the sense that it's like yeah he's sort of a tough guy but he also doesn't seem like a dickhead mm-hmm. and and he often plays those types of characters gruff but not a total piece of shit. And then the main dude who we're dealing with a lot, he's Damn the Bruce. guy. Yeah. He's the guy who, um, uh, yeah, his name was the, uh, uh Keith, uh, Zarabachka. He's yes, like just guy. a straight up, like psychopath basically. Yeah. Um, and then the Connor O'Farrell guy is the more kind of like evil, but goofy evil, you know, he's, he's kind of, he, he's a dickhead, but, he, 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 was, he's was, not he's not like front and center fucking shit up. He's just kind of like, ha ha, yeah, we fucked that shit up. Was he the one that had to get stuck with um, Malcolm Reed when uh, they found the Wraith? And he was just like, yeah. you go off with him and make sure he's safe. He's like, but Captain. Yeah. You know, or whatever. They, were, they were tired of his shit, too. Yeah. That was the impression I got. Yeah, I mean, come on, you're on this hunt and you have to go babysit some fucking... Like, it's like, yeah, I didn't invite him to stay with us. You did, you know? Made me wonder what the chain of command was in there and why, they, I guess, you, in a hunt like that, what do you do? You go out and agree who's going to be in charge of everything? I don't know. I, guess I think it's like real, like when you go hunting, it's more of it's like the, there's a vibe. There's a vibe. Yeah. Vibe. And you don't want to fuck not, it up. It's not like anybody's really in charge. Because everyone's yeah. got guns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. wandering around with guns. See, so there's, an, there's just an understanding, I guess. I don't know. It seems like that would be something that would... Like the, the guy who's never in charge would just be like, okay, I'm in charge this time, guys. And I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. And it's just your personality that kind of well, makes you, you in charge. So, you know, you mentioned the poem, of course, that, uh, at the end of the episode that, that Archer figures out by Yates. Uh, yeah, it was called The Song of the Wandering Anus. Yeah, anus with an E. Yeah, anus. That's what it said. A-E-N. I looked it up on the internet. The Song of of the wandering anus. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the right name of the. That's the right. That's title. what it's called. That's the. That's the name of the famous Yeats poem. Back then, even about the fisherman who sees uh, some crazy ass woman and then spends the rest of his life trying to find her. Anus. Yeah. It, find, it, yeah. It was a fish, and then it turned into a woman. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He saw. He saw. He saw. Um. He saw Jupiter, and it turned into Uranus. <laughs> Mars, Mercury, and then it became the wandering anus. Yes, the I, wandering anus. You're wandering, which anus. is is a real medical condition. Oh, look it up on webmd. That sounds com. like a real bummer to me. <laughs> I, I I got I went to Saturn and all I got was this wandering. Where's your anus. special effects? Oh no. 
<laughs> yeah, those that's those special effects are sounds are getting less wacky as the night goes on. It's hard it's hard to keep up with the Yeah, this is a, <laughs> it sounds like a siren. Yeah, oh no. But when he references that Oh, they're coming to get us. <laughs> when he references that poem, I really liked how he's talking to Trip and he's trying to lay this out for Trip. He's clearly a little bit embarrassed, right? He reads one line of the poem. Just a short line. Trip doesn't know any Yeats. And then he says, anyway. And uh, yeah, and that's the thing was great is is it for characterization purposes, he knows Trip isn't interested in this shit. He, he you know, he does not need to go out of his way to like Picard would have at least done a stanza. You know, <laughs> Picard would have yeah, at least recited right, recited right. a stanza, whether or not the people around him were interested in hearing it or not, or whether or not it informed their view of it. Cause cause Archer was able to then summarize the poem succinctly without <laughs> yeah, reading it. He didn't even go he didn't even read any of the lyrics. Yeah, because he knew he was talking to Trip eight Trip eight ain't no dummy, but he's not he's not He knows keen. about the girls from Ipswich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course he does. Yeah, he, he Which he, must be a, a variation on the girl from Nantucket that I mentioned. But it was too too close to. It's like Ipswich. What does that rhyme with? You, know? <laughs> you can come up with some stuff. Isn't it pronounced something weird like Ips, Ipich or something? Ipich? No, you're thinking of uh, Worcester, Worcester, or uh, or um or Sm- you're thinking, you're Smithwick's thinking Greenwich Smithwick's beer Greenwich is, well, like, Smith- Pic- Piccadilly Circus Smithwick's beers like they always London say, oh, Smith- Smithwick's Smithwick's they always say London Smithwick's. I'm not gonna say I know how to pronounce it but that's what I hear the bartender say Hey Smithwick's. he's not gonna say he knows how to pronounce yeah, it yeah it's but I know how yeah, to there pronounce are the, it. some of those wicks are are icks yeah so yeah Archer sums it up he goes he, he spends the rest but of his life switch. searching for his vision of perfection I suppose something he could never quite find he goes it's her and then of course Tucker as the captain like everyone's giving him shit this whole time oh i know and everyone no matter what like um um to paul accuses him of hallucinating he's like yeah. there are no psychotropics on this planet i know it's her that's how or that's archer right there <laughs> well I, what was cool about that was every like you said everyone's giving archer shit and he just doesn't seem to care he's like no i'm not fucking hallucinating i checked he's yeah. like i'm not dumb i scanned I scan myself. I scan the fucking plants. I'm not tripping balls. Yeah. Yeah. And then she's all like, do you think she's a human? You, you moron. And he's like, yeah. no, I don't think she's, of course she's not a human. To Paul. Come on, to Paul. To Paul. But there's something interesting going on here. Because, you know, the Vulcans are are really incurious, um, particularly in Enterprise. They, they portray yeah. them as being particularly incurious. We already know this. everything about it. Like, we know enough for what we need to We've do. We've been going warp five for... For centuries, and then, I think like warp seven, I think. And she brings up a line which is a good line, but they never really roll too hard with that. Is uh, when she goes, uh, "With respect, Captain, I wonder if you would be so determined to find this apparition if it were a scantily clad man." Yes. So that is, of course, you know, uh, it's not exactly the most, you know. Semi progressive. Yeah, you know, it's getting it's there. It's getting there, you know. But uh, they never really run, do anything with that line, though, you know. No, they don't. And but- if anything, that kind of takes away from from the thing because unless they really did want you to think about this, even though he got his way, they never indicated that they wanted you, the audience really to consider. It's like, yeah, he got his way, but why don't we do that with other things? What was his motivation for saving this person? I, I, he made emotional connection, and suddenly it's sentient. You know, I, like I, I think that. <laughs> I I do agree that it's a little confusing. Yeah, and, and her line kind of basically detracts from that and says, you know, like, is this the only reason you're into it? Because it's a beautiful or woman. What know? they might have been going for, and maybe the execution just wasn't there, was the assumption that you, they might have been assuming that the audience would understand. Obviously, Archer is not interested in this woman because she's a an attractive woman. That that the way Scott Bakula was playing it and when we find out about the 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 uh poem at the end that he makes this connection that that he it's like it's like that techno song that techno trance song from the 1990s that has it's some sort of astral projection type thing and it has a quote of uh of uh david duchovny in it some x-files quotes and i can't fucking remember what the song was because back then you just ha- you found songs they were just littered all over the place do 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 Dan is it, made some is of it do, orbital? Do, 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 I don't know. Do, 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 Listeners do. at home, help us out with this. Yeah, you can somebody, write in if you know what song that is. But but my point is is that I I can almost I don't remember enough of it to know to know the name to know the full musical style. I can't even hum it into a 
into a Kazam app or anything like that or whatever they have, you know, I, I, yeah, but it's there, it's in my brain. The, 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 the pointer file is in my brain. It's just not pointing to the yeah. fucking data. Yeah. If it's it's going to take some, some hard looking because uh, Mulder and Scully X files techno song is just remixes. Well, the, and the main exactly. Theme, so. It's because this was not, yeah. so I, now we're just talking about this song because I do want to find out. Yeah. I was, I was all night last night. I was just playing a bunch of old nineties. Uh, this was, trance. this was yeah. real techno. It just had a sample of somebody's. Exactly. Voice. It was not, it was not the X Files yeah. theme. It was a trance, trippy trance, traveling through the universe while on drugs. Song trance with, is tricky because sometimes trance with is little bits and pieces. Trance is just like major blue balls sometimes. Oh yeah, but you know, it has to be good. It depends. Yeah, I yeah. guess you're not meant to. I don't know. I think you're meant to fall asleep while you are consuming yeah. copious amounts of drugs uh, in a. Uh, post Cold War, pre nine eleven era. Mm. <laughs> it's pretty much what those songs were designed for, <laughs> and and so, try as I might, they don't they don't quite take me back to that feeling right. because that yeah. feeling has been extinguished repeatedly. I like progressive over the last twenty years. I like progressive house myself. Yeah, that's yeah, that's different because you know it's mm. that's it's good. It's but good. anyway, um, so- I, I, what I'm saying is is that he. I, if, if if you're meant to assume that Archer obviously has something else going on that makes him interested in this person and that he has already figured out that they're sentient, but has not yet figured out that they're being hunted, right? You can kind of be like, come on, Archer. It's like you're saying, Dan, like, yeah, you should have, you could have sussed this out a little earlier than you did because he didn't get mad until she was like, they're hunting us. Yeah. He right. didn't make the connection that the audience has already made. Now you could argue that there's no reason for Archer to have made that connection with the information he had, but as an audience, you're getting frustrated with him because it's we we know what's going on. We've seen the dirty looks mm. and we, uh, you know, from the, from the hunters and, and, and we've heard them yell Wraith, you know? So yeah. we know that, there's something's going on here. They were just laughing at him the whole time. And then they finally are like, yeah, you saw a race, <laughs> you know, and after giving yeah. him shit the whole time. I know, right. Why didn't they tell him <laughs> what a piece? Well, I mean, we can guess why they didn't tell him yeah, because like, there so must be some guilt there. They must understand. Are you sure it was a human woman? Was she from your ship? Like, you know, like he knew the whole time what this guy was going at. Yeah. And, and he was the, just like making fun of him. And yeah. I interpret that, interpreted that as them, as, as the, as the writers of the episode indicating to us that they, despite what they say about thinking these creatures are just dumb creatures that they harbor some amount of guilt because otherwise why not just say hell yeah fuck yeah we're at this planet because there's these crazy motherfucking creatures that can read your mind why didn't they just tell them that right away and been like it's awesome you want to hunt them with us we'll fuck them up but they didn't do that because you can you can un- mess with your mind it's going to be crazy like- you can guess that there's some residual lingering subterranean guilt about what they're doing. Maybe not guilt is, but, but understanding that what they're doing, that they're not just killing fucking pigs. Yeah. They were also concerned about those pigs are tasty. Apparently they, I think they were concerned about the crew's health as well. So they had some sympathy for something or unless they just, that was just an excuse that they didn't want. Well, and they were also not assholes. I mean, I, I, that again, that's a cool thing that they were invited, you know, the, they, they were invited into camp. They they shared their food. They were chill. They definitely have some, Kind of, if they find thing. a bunch of Romulans on a rogue planet, and then they're they're a bunch of assholes. But these guys weren't. Yeah, assholes. these are just some fun loving yuck mucks. <laughs> um, so so when so back to when T'Pol was saying you wouldn't have cared if it was some half naked man. Maybe that wasn't her pointing out to him the hypocrisy of his beliefs. Maybe it was simply like. Oh, were you seeing shit because you were tripping? No, I wasn't tricking. Tripping. It's like, oh, well, maybe it was like a hot woman you were chasing. Yeah. And and then he's like, well, was it? No, it was. A, it has nothing to do with the fact that she was a beautiful woman. It was just some woman from a poem. So it could have, not. To Paul might not have been pointing out any sort of anything deep. It might have been on the same level of questioning of reasons as to why he cared about some things. She's already written him off. She's just like, yeah. You know, She's he's already. Why don't you go back to the ship? Yeah, go back up there. Go all the way back up there to that ship of yours. That's how she talked. Mm-hmm. She had a deep voice, though. To Paul, L- L- yeah, like Arwen and like uh, uh, I'll let I'll let her name is. It's from, breathy, uh, breathy. Uh, Frodo. You're talking about the actress from The Expanse. I don't want to go to the store today. <laughs> that's what, yeah, that's a lot. The classic line from The Expanse. <laughs> I don't. I think I'm just gonna stay home. Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> don't throw water at me. I will kill you. <laughs> oh, she said that to her son, or oh, her grandson, or something. Grandson. He was having some fun. I will smother you. I will smother you. That's what she said. <laughs> you punch me in my pot, I'll smother you. <laughs> I would 
smother you. That's what she says, right? Pot belly, I'd punch you. Right? <laughs> yeah. Poot belly, poot, 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 poot um, belly. The cells were in a state of chromosomal flux. They were mutating. Mm-hmm. So didn't get a lot of flux, but the flux we got was good flux. It was flux flux. It was a good flux. It was the flux capacitor. That must have been uh, a most unusual pig. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, we were talking about. Um, the guys were like hunter dudes and they were like inviting them on their oh yeah that reminds me where i was going where another not we're going but one something i meant to where were you going i meant to wonder about where did you go so they said that these this this these been hunting on this rogue planet for 9 centuries or, or 9, nine, genera- nine generations. generations 9 generations it's a rogue planet how far they got to travel now to get to this thing after 900 years you right, know what i'm saying right right that planet's floating around I, out there i guess if they can travel how fast does warp go does it go the to planet lights? ain't going that fast i mean it's, yeah. it's what is it orbiting like the galactic galactic core or something the uh, planet's yeah. just floating it's just floating around but i mean it's rogue enough to that it doesn't get caught it's got to be going fast enough that it's not going to get caught in something if they, else. if they have warp ships they can catch it because it's not going planets don't go warp yeah they don't go light speed i do the warp goes light speed right what? Warp goes faster than light. Faster than That's light. That's why they call it FTL. Yeah. <laughs> FTL. Yeah, faster than light. Faster FTL. Than... So a uh, planet doesn't go light speed. So one light year is... I it, The planet's going to take fucking forever, Yeah, man. so they can just keep going. Yeah. It's just, you know... I mean... Maybe they were a roving armada. No, I don't think... They, 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 <laughs> I think they made it very clear because nah. they talk about their planet. I like it. They're like, do you, do you go hunting on your planet? They're all like... <laughs> Fuck Gosh. yeah, man! Are you uh, fucking nuts? Uh, Hell yeah, bro! <laughs> I mean, they said style. something along those lines. It's just less dangerous on their planet. Yeah, I wonder what drew them there. See, we could have learned a little more about what drew them there in the first place. Yeah, on the other hand, it's unnecessary. It's like sort of the economy of story writing is yeah. that... It, what do you want to focus on? And it's and it's of course television writing, and they at this stage have forty two, forty three minutes or something, you know, to tell a story in when you account for commercials. So, um, I love a good world building story. I mean, I'm diehard Lord of the Rings, Silmarillion, you know, unfinished tales, all that lore, stuff. like like it, like not da- not data lore, like as in like story lore. lore, yeah. Like that's although what, both data and lore mean. Nah. The same thing. They mean they mean lore. They mean information. Dan is wacky. Wacky ass Dan. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop, boop. All right, good for another ten minutes. Um, <laughs> right. So, lore. That's one thing I like. Uh, I remember playing Mass Effect. I've talked about this game before, and people have pointed out the flaws with some of the science in it. Fine, something for example, like. Something about the 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 time. Oh God, I forgot the. Anyway, this is not important. Time specific. dilation. It's they they have these 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 things that that you fall into. That Giant one, one Japanese those, hornets. One of those things. It's some one kind of, of hornets. It's it kind of analogous to subspace or something. You fall into it and you go faster and you go super wormhole? fast. And you and except it's made by it's it's hyperspace. Sounds like a wormhole. It's not it's not a natural occurrence. So you have to make it's, the jump. You just hold space time over relays. Poke they're, a hole. They're called relays, and they're made. And there's a whole story about how they got there. But they weren't like space things. They're big, like built things, giant space um, things. And you're saying that this is good. Like space, not a ship, but they're a space stationy thing that, and they hop people out from sp- point to point. And the argument there is that you know, well, if you went that fast, you would go in the future and blah blah blah. But your anyway, point was that that's good world building. It was it was just fun world building because you play the game and you could spend a lot of time reading all like you picked up the like the little when something happened, you got a little like lore sort of yeah. background thing to read. You can you didn't have to read it, but if you wanted to, it's kind of fun just to read them because they really fleshed out. They even fleshed out like space battles and how how it's like really boring in space battles because it's all about numbers. I don't know. It's just it's cool when they really go into the if lore. They, but it, but if they do it right, right, that's the thing. It has to be done well, and I really do love that. But I also like and respect the the space for stories that truly are self contained and don't really rely too much on that. They might contribute to it, but they don't rely on it. It, it, it makes it more universal in a sense, right? It, that you don't require all this backstory to fully appreciate the plot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought Enterprise did a really good job a lot of the time of going back that way because that's basically what TOS was. TOS did not give a shit about whatever. They were like, we were going to tell this story this week. And so, okay, we've invented Klingons. We've invented uh, half white face, half black face people. You know, we, we'll just invent whatever makes yeah. sense. We invent a planet where all the people are gangsters you know, because that's the story we wanted to tell. We'll, we'll, we'll go to a planet where it's cowboys and Indians. So that you're, this world is sort of improvised then. Do you, how much attention do you think they've 
generally pay to like previous things that have happened so as not to break those rules versus trying to establish some general concepts beforehand. And, and, and Enterprise, on the, on the other hand, it was really good at picking up, you know, you know, sort of previewing things, you know, previewing Klingon stuff, like getting into those stories, start, you know, extending back the history of Klingons and Romulans and Vulcans. And we learn a lot about Vulcans and Andorians. That's great too. So it contributed a lot to the lore, Andorians. but, but also a lot of the stories were, uh, just d- didn't rely on it. In, in other words, or, or they relied on it in, in the sense that you're like, you're watching Star Trek. So you understand all the basic stuff. So in other words, we didn't need to know all that extra stuff about how do these people come here? Uh, how long have they been fighting these creatures? How, are, do the creatures have a culture or are they more and, animal like? Yeah. And that's, that's, I think what I liked about the game mass effect is you didn't really have to read any of that stuff. I think Skyrim had all those books and stuff. Yeah, the Elder uh, yeah. Scrolls has all those books. You don't really have to read any of that. And, shit. and the thing is, is it would be cool if Enterprise had more time or more flexibility to go into those details a little yeah. bit more. But since it didn't, they they often did a good job of, of this economy of story of being like, here's what you need to know to get this particular point across to move these characters from point A to B to C. Well, absolutely. Um, and we talked about this with A Year in Hell about how there are certain things brought up and it's like, did we really need to bring up certain things? We weren't going to go that deep into like why were these things brought up you're sort of presenting an idea that we've all you know sort of approached in storytelling before but what are you offering are you just like why are you bringing up this point that we've just explored before without offering your own kind of take on it or something like that so like doing a cover oh a song yeah oh yeah cover song do a cover to practice or do a cover to invent a new way to do music. <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe that's an extreme. But you know what I'm saying? Like that a, a good cover is is one that brings something new to to the I tale think, or I a think different take of. On generally it. speaking, I like think like Devo's. I can't get no satisfaction. Yeah, John Frusciante's um, big takeover, Bad Brains yeah. <laughs> cover. That's really good. Or and Ordinary it, World. The 90s trance version versus the original Duran Duran. Well, I think trance and techno, Ugh. basically, that's all they do is they take bits of songs and kind of DJ them up and kind of add their own little. But not always successfully. Not always successfully. I think, generally speaking, it's good to add something new to the table. It is also, if you have a band that really nails a cover, it can work. It can work really well if it's mixed in with a bunch of their other stuff. But if they just rely on playing covers all the time, I guess I don't want to make a judgment on that. That's a whole other discussion. No, but, I agree. I, and 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 that was a risk that you had. We don't with, have to name any names. You know who they are. <laughs> yeah. That was a risk with Enterprise, and I think it was a trap. Not a trap. I, I think Enterprise fell into that a couple of times, but for the most part, they they set up enough of a difference because they were so far before the Federation. They didn't have the Prime Directive laid out. They didn't have real hardcore allies the allies they did have were fucking the andorians the Tellerides, and the and the vulcans and these people are all a bunch shady. Of assholes. they're all a bunch of assholes in their own and ways and the humans are the humans are assholes too so it's like four assholes groups of assholes being assholes in slightly different ways um pig, i'm surrounded by assholes <laughs> big people don't run boo. keep firing assholes <laughs> why didn't anybody tell me my ass was so big <laughs> A lot of people think that movie sucks. I found out. I didn't know that as a kid. That when until I was an adult, I was like reading some things. We lost the bleeps, the creeps, and the sweeps. Some people oh. are like, "Oh," and then Mel Brooks made fucking space balls, and like everyone hates that. And I was like, what? I, I do need to dig up. People I did. Are terrible. Yeah. I, I made an mm-hmm. one of the first things I did when I got interested in video editing back in the day. Vetting. When I was I don't know fourteen. That's what or they something. call it on the internet now. I got, I got a video card, a Halpage Halpage video card. Uh, you could plug a you could plug a VCR into and digitize videos, and so I got my. Digitize them. That's bad. I know. You make Mortal Kombat. So I got a. I took space balls and I edited out all the parts with dot matrix. Hmm. And (laughs) wow, that must. And, that was a and a couple other parts. That was kind of inspired. Not in here, buddy. I this basically is a cut. I basically cut Spaceballs down to about forty five minutes, <laughs> and it was great. It was a great cut of Spaceballs because it mo- it was mostly just the actual Spaceballs <laughs> for the most part. Um, We're the Spaceballs. <laughs> watch out! Watch out! Perry Air. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, it looks like their air looked really refreshing. I watched that again recently. It holds up. It's a stupid movie, but it says it right at the beginning. It basically is like, this is a stupid movie. I thought, I thought, I really. Some people like Men in Tights. I really didn't. 
Maybe you need to watch. Men it again. in Tights is not as good. It's not. It's not it's, as classic. It's not as good as. But maybe it's, it's got just some a, funny jokes. It's but, all right. but maybe that's circumcision little, special today. Half off. But maybe that's what they. A lot of people felt about Spaceballs. Is is you know? Oh that no was doubt. They're Men in Tights. And to each their own. Yeah. I, I've I've spoken with people who are huge Mel Brooks fans, and they cannot stand Spaceballs. And I uh, I'm appreciative that, and I understand that. But then I will nevertheless put it in and and laugh as they are abandoning yeah. Spaceball One. Is like close down the three wing circus. <laughs> <laughs> Shut down all the stores on the mall. Um, sorry, but uh, anyway, Spaceball Star Trek. It's got Spaceballs. I didn't get the raspberry joke until much later. Oh, me neither. It took me for <laughs> only one man would dare give me the raspberry. Yeah, right. Uh, folks are at home, so if you feel bad, a raspberry is when somebody goes. <laughs> and I didn't make. None of us made that connection until we're much, much older. Because I'm dumb. We're really stupid. I'm stupid. You guys, you're listening to some morons. I don't understand I, uh... things. Mura Maroons. I think I got it. No se puedo. But anyway, um, you know, Enterprise, uh, uh, I guess we can start winding up. You know, this uh, the first season of Enterprise is really worth a watch. If people have, you know, if they, got, if they watched it a long time ago and haven't seen it in a while, or if they never got into it because people just, you know, kind of talk shit about Enterprise I or something. I love Scott Bakula Scott so Bac- much. Scott Bakula is awesome. Jolene Blaylock's awesome. Connor Trenier, who plays Trip, is awesome. Yeah, there are good. That's the thing. It drew me. Scott Bakula drew me in, and then the yeah. rest of the cast is the reason I stayed. And no, Scott Bakula is the reason I stayed, but I'm glad they were good too. They go on so many in the first season. There's just a lot of really clever little adventures. No, they're not all classic episodes. I wouldn't call Rogue Planet a classic episode by any means. Mm. It's classically styled. But, you know, there's not a huge amount of impact or anything, but it's a fun story. And there's a lot of stories like this that are just really enjoyable. And I, you know. Yeah, the Rogue Planet, I thought the the, the purpose of what I got out of it felt a little muddled is all, you know. Agreed. But, so it, you know, it it's, it up a little. it's different. It's something you haven't really seen. It's, it's, I don't know. I was about to say it's different, but really, to be fair, a lot what a lot of Enterprise is, is it's both different and familiar. Yeah. It makes you feel comfortable. You feel like you're watching Star Trek, but you're also seeing aspects and, and different it kind isn't, of things. It isn't that different from stuff you see in lots of other Star Trek or even stuff you see in just sort of fantasy tales. You know, you can easily adapt this to something that's not sci-fi this could be a some kind of woodland spirit it's almost that, like the tempest or something uh, or a fairy that's putting an enchantment on you yeah there's certain genres and ideas that you that i you know i can just watch and even if the implementation isn't wonderful i can still enjoy it you know and uh star trek it, enterprise it never actively like annoyed me at any part that episode i'm talking about that i like yeah. Enter- enterprise as a whole i like i really wish that was able to go on for longer because really there isn't there series, isn't much to this that episode one. was fine it was whatever there isn't much to this one but it's yeah. you know it's well put together and and the hunters are fun yeah right i mean you, you they okay they go to a, a rogue planet Mm-hmm. When does that ever happen on Star Trek? And they 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 meet some aliens that are kind of weird, but they're not dark. they're not a bunch of dicks, and everything's kind of okay. Well, they were kind of dicks. And there's a there's a weird mystery. The crew's not in sudden danger. There's the, not like the, yeah, the universe not like, is not in danger. Yeah, like the, the stakes aren't the that high. The ship isn't like about to explode. Like yeah, the worst that happens is someone gets injured, and they're just like, hey, we'll come back on the ship, we'll fix you up. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm was, gonna stay here. And they're like, nah, like no just, problem we'll for them to just take them back to flocks, right? And, Put the flocks. So I guess there was a lot at stake, though, which is like the life on that planet. But you know, she never really provided any sort of. But that's still low stakes, and not. I'm not saying that as a pejorative against the slug people, who I'm a big fan of. Yeah, not the slug on the nose people, the slug slug people, the actual tapeworm people. I like that it was low because 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 there is nothing as low stakes and simultaneously as high stakes as saving a a single small group of people. Yeah, right. That is. The heroic journey. That's a heroic tale. Um, they tried to do that a little bit in Generations. They didn't quite get there because in Generations it wasn't going to the, the the universe wasn't going to explode. It was just going to be this one and particular then, planet was going to die. Insurrection and an insurrection. Yeah, an insurrection is another kind of a similar example. It's lower stakes. It's not. Star Trek never dealt with any kind of uh, galaxy universe exploding or anything. Like no, that. they do. They do, do definitely they? for sure. Like Especially the universe the, falling. Discovery, Discovery did. does. Discovery does. And the, that thing is kind of out of nowhere and they don't explore it enough. That one is kind of like, whoa, okay. Picard does a little. Um, uh, Voyager has a lot with the Borg and then Species 85875. Okay, yeah, or all good things is, yes, yeah, with you know, the Q all, stuff. Yeah, but, some Q stuff. They, they do it before. Sometimes they do it well. Sometimes it's kind of like, ugh. 
Because how many times can you, you know, yeah. save the universe? But even if he was talking about saving Dominion Earth way. or saving the Federation, you know, the Dominion War was all about the total upheaval of the cultures, the, all the cultures of the Alpha. Yeah, and it, was un- and it was unknown because it's this whole race of people from the side of the galaxy that yeah. we're totally un- we yeah, don't fuck, know what the fuck they fuck got going those on. those guys. Yeah, so they this, fucked up. It's low stakes. Enterprise did a lot of that. Uh, Enterprise also did a lot of interesting political stuff, which, mm-hmm. was, which was cool. I think that... Ultimately, and we're going to do, we'll do more Enterprise episodes in the future. I look forward to doing that. But, um, you know, in in terms of sort of a comment looking back now, almost 20 years, is that it was the first, Star Trek had been on for what, 14 years or something at that point. People were growing a little tired of it. Um, We weren't at that, we didn't have the opportunity to miss Star Trek yet at that stage. So I think a lot of It's like we we were almost about to miss Star Trek and then we, then they brought it back. Yeah, exactly. They had to let it lay fallow for a bit. And the other thing is, is also around that time, you know, Battlestar Galactica is coming out, you know, Fringe, you know, other things that are starting to engage people more and do more aggressive and interesting things. Curb your enthusiasm. (laughs) Yeah, curb your enthusiasm. Um, which is great. I love those things. I was attracted to those things. I love Battlestar Galactica. We are seeing a similar thing now in the sense that we have the Expanse and then you have Discovery and Picard and then you have uh, like the Orville, right? We're starting to get to the stage where it's like, this is what we want. We want all these flavors, right? The Orville gives us a little of that old school Trek kind of flavor like, like yeah, the, what we saw Orville's, in Enterprise. Orville's great because it's doing the thing where it's doing the formula after we know what that formula is. Yes. They didn't know what the formula was back then because they were making it. Yes. And now you get to look back and, and it's just, it can't help but be everything Do we this, want. this, this, and this. Yeah, and tweak s- here, tweak there. And, and um, um, Seth MacFarlane is is talented enough to be able, and he, know, and he knows Star Trek well enough to like really know exactly yeah. what points to hit on that one. So. And, and so now we have the opportunity to, as we like, as we're comfortable with, as is appropriate for us, we can choose what flavors we want to get, what flavors of Trek, what flavors, because all the old ones still exist. And then now they're providing us with these new ones. And then there's the Orville, there's the Expanse and a number of other shows out, out there. I'm not even talking about all the wonderful, you know, fantasy shows and things like that popping up the Witcher outlander. There's a lot of cool stuff out there, too much cool stuff. But now we're able to to access all that kind of simultaneously. That's really fun. Yeah, The Witcher's doing a good thing by bringing back that sort of fantasy style. And really. campy. You yeah, know, yeah, serious, right. but campy. Right. Uh, Not afraid. It's like, what's the monster going to be like? You know? There's that Sabrina show. Oh, yeah. The oh, Sabrina. I keep meaning to watch that. Oh, a great show. Total, Also, total camp, yeah. you know? But again, all these different Zap. flavors. <laughs> Zap. Totally. All these different <laughs> flavors out there. There's, it's, it's an exciting time to be able to enjoy stuff. So, um, you know, it's... Uh, I'm I'm happy to be alive at this time. I lament that there's no there that Enterprise didn't get to go on longer because I do think it was I think it started off well and improved for the most part, you know, throughout the uh throughout the the seasons and it would have been really cool to see what another two or three seasons would have would have produced and added to the to the Trek lore. But on the other hand, even though it, it got canceled after four seasons, um, they do a lot of references to Archer and the original Enterprise. I mean, it comes up, Archer in particular, uh, comes up a lot. So they've really inserted him firmly into the history yeah. of the Federation and Starfleet. Even into the, the reboot, the it's alternate universe, I should say. <laughs> alternate Excuse universe. Yeah. They mention how in the first one, um, th- that how uh, uh, Shatner like killed admiral archer's dog, dog or something yeah yeah <laughs> i accidentally and it's, it's it's fucked up it's like oh i just whoop here i remember since i landed my, my spaceship on a, his dog killed a dog killed <laughs> kirk by the way not shatner right i'm oh, sorry and it wasn't even <laughs> shatner. It was, it was bill shatner because <laughs> <laughs> bill oh. shatner loves horses i don't know what he thinks i'm sure yeah, he likes I'm sorry dogs. i meant kirk it's like a couple weeks ago when i said it was tuvok who gave janeway the watch in year of hell i listened back and it was actually chakotay so oh, that's right. My whole yeah, point was right, was right. was totally undermined by your yeah. own you just, ignorance. You just misspoke. Just nobody all. knew what I was talking about. But you that. you were you meant Chicote. I meant Chicote, bro. All right. Why would Tuvok <laughs> be meant, giving her I a watch? Chicote, bro. I I did have Chicote. something quick if we have time. Okay. Well, first I Chicote. just want to say we we have time. I just wanted to say last thing I wanted to mention from the episode, then like whatever you guys wanted to add is I I did not want to end the episode without mentioning Archer's uh, you know reaction 
to when the uh, wraith transformed from the woman creature into the wraith creature mm. because his, Scott Bakula does this brilliant thing where it starts to happen and at first he's like shocked and then he there's a moment of, of revulsion almost and then it and then it kind of switches into this calm like curiosity like oh yeah yeah new life and and with a tinge I don't know if I was projecting or imagining but I felt with a little tinge of like whew, I'm glad I did not sleep with the, <laughs> yeah. with the worm creature. Well, he or, had that he had that look on his face at the end, kind of like a like, relief. Whoa. Or maybe he was maybe he was coming he to was terms. Like, that was a close one. <laughs> maybe he was coming to terms with what it would have been like to have sex. Or with maybe him. We, he mean, did have sex with her off seat off screen, and we didn't see it. And he was kind of like, oh, okay, that's why. That's why. There's nothing in the story that would indicate that that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, he was that's a like, fair point. Oh, shit. Um, all right. I was just going to barrel through some lines that were because the the um. Is that why you're wearing your barrel of monkey socks? You know what? So no. you could use that particular. But phrase? everything has a reason. Everything has a reason. Are you going to gonna stand by that statement? Does the it... world is connected <laughs> to what on a quantum level. As long as you say <laughs> quantum, that explains spirituality. Oh, yeah. That's right. You're right. <laughs> quantum. I just said it. Actually, there's a show on Hulu. Quantum. That's that talks about that, so it wasn't bad. Um, all right, I'm squashing barrel. here. Yeah, no so barrel. That, so barrel. Yeah, so the as we know, the hunters were kind of you know they were mostly cool, but they were kind of like bro 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 dads, you know, yeah, they were yeah, like right. braj. So um, they kept laughing. They yeah. kept laughing. They were laughing a lot uh, the whole time. Yeah, they're those guys. They they thought something was funny, and you didn't know what it was. Yeah. So the first time. So this is after you saw the woman. Sam Roos goes like, on this planet, it's always night. You're surrounded by things you can hear but not see. It can stimulate the imagination. Burzon, you wouldn't be the first person who looked into the jungle and saw something that wasn't there. Archer, she was real. Sam Roos, Captain Archer. Oh, I gotta do the voice. Captain Archer, what are the chances you'd encounter a half-naked woman? Oh, you think, you know, dozens of light years said she was half naked? from your home world. Go to sleep. If you're lucky... Maybe she'll visit you in your dreams. And then they're right, like, right. And they're like, like go, to, go to sleep. <laughs> and then the whole guy's like, <laughs> and then the next thing they go, <laughs> then the next thing Reed goes, they're like holding their guns around the fire. all like, Bleh. next time they're talking about hunting fire wolves, which I wish we got to see some fire wolves. That would have been cool. It would have been awesome. Wolves. That just a shot. Just there was a also shot. some talk are they wolves about a large like, reptile. Are, are the, do the wolves like fire or are they on fire? I was hoping they were on fire. Just, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just, just run around on fire. <laughs> yeah, and so Reed's all like, they breathe fire. Reed's all like, you know, pip pip. I'll try to keep up. Pip pip pip. <laughs> and then they think that's funny. They're like, ha 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 ha. And then um, we'd appreciate it. We only have two days left. And then Damarus goes, "Did you sleep well, Captain?" And Archer goes, "Yes, fine, good. If you see any beautiful females today, you'll be sure to let us know." Ha 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 ha. Um. And then there was Archer was talking about last night I walked in the alien jungle alone chasing a woman who couldn't be there. Tucker was like, that might qualify. And then Archer was like, it was like I was being drawn to her. Like I didn't have any control over what I was doing. I can't explain it. And he goes, she must have been some woman. And then Archer like does a rolly eye kind of thing. He doesn't actually roll his eyes, but he's that like, must oh. have been a most unusual pig. So that was an instance. Of, that was a bonus of them just kind of abusing Archer. Um, Archer goes, fine. And then Tucker goes, you disappeared on us. What are you doing out here? Archer goes, just taking some scans. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, that, why, I put that because Tucker knew what was up. He Archer was, this was out, he was out there looking for the woman, and Tucker comes in on him and is just like... Archer's getting a lot of shit this episode. He's just like, what are, what are you doing out here? What are you doing out here? And he's like, just taking some scans. So that was just like, His you know... His whole crew is just sassy. Yeah. Like the whole it's take, it sounds like a, a, taking some scans is either a euphemism <laughs> yeah. for shitting yes. or <laughs> masturbating. Hmm, taking, I like... <laughs> I like masturbating. It's less likely, but I think it's better. <laughs> it's just fun. If Captain Archer just wanders around. He's going to go wood. batch one out. If Trip Tucker known, <laughs> knows him for a long time, he's like, yeah, you know the captain. He's got to go out in the woods. You know, he just likes to tug I on it a, in the woods. I knew a guy who would masturbate with his cat, like sitting on like the arm of his couch he was sitting on next to him. Uh, maybe that's not a problem. I don't know. It's just, I, I don't know either. It just, I, mean, I don't want to judge. It just seemed to me that was like too much. <laughs> Did the cat watch him or was the cat like just you chilling? Sure Actually, he was like, get out of here. He was in one of those scoop chairs. You know, those wicker scoop chairs for one person. That's, that it's getting weirder. Yeah. So he was on that. Like and a, then like that's getting weirder. Like, and the, yeah. Papazon. 
Papasan. Papasan, as opposed to a Papadon. Papa say Papasan. Papadons are bread, Dan. Papadons are bread. Papadon, Papasan. Papadons are bread. Papadon, Papasan. Papadon. Dan, Papadons are bread. What was that from? What? Was that Clash song? Was it that show? He's like, Papasan, Papadon, Papasan. Oh, yeah, it was from that Simpsons episode where they go to Scorpio. Oh, yeah, that's a good episode. Anyway, um, to Paul's skeptical, too. You know, we talked about that because she was like, there's no psychotropic compounds. Almost done. Um, <laughs> I with, think that's the most referenced Simpsons episode in this podcast. We were referenced it like once. Oh, did we do no, it? No, we talked about that uh, once. I remember watching that with Patrick uh, when it came out. It was really funny. And then, oh, yeah, to Paul goes, do you hunt on your home world? And then Dan Rose goes, yes. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. And then um, Dan Rose goes, does it? You saw one yourself, your mystery woman. She was undoubtedly a wraith who wandered too close to camp. This is after, like, you know, they're giving up the fact that they know what he saw, and they're not playing that game anymore. He goes, Archer goes, but she looked human. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and then Burzon goes, you don't even know if it was a she. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. And Sherat goes, they're shapeshifters. They can look like anything, even people you know. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I like how you do the voice of the one guy really well, and then the other two just turn into higher, like progressively higher pitched people. Yeah, I don't really remember what they sound like. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that was it. There was one where they slapped him on the back too when, when they when they laughed, but I don't know if I. That's not so important. But they yeah, did a lot of giggling. They did a lot of giggling. That especially that one line. They just kept giggling it was at a him. Jolly bunch. It's like, do you hunt? Do you hunt at home? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, all right so anything else any more quotes any more thoughts or shall we wrap it up <laughs> i think that's it that's it all right that's about all we can squeeze out of this one well what are they, we doing next time uh you know we don't know yeah we don't yeah we could oh that's why I there was one more at the very end when um damaru sounds like i was saying he has a vendetta um he says like a ru- love hate relationship based on like emotions um this was the one we were saying that they maybe they pulled it back so he wouldn't seem sympathetic. And he goes, my father made it out, but only two of his friends survived. And then he slaps Tucker on the back and goes, ha, 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 ha. So, yeah, that was a laugh. <laughs> so a lot of unnecessary laughter, but I guess it... Not it, the worst aliens ever. Did we need to see him again? Probably not. We never gave, saw him again. Okay. I mean, it gave him a good sort of like gang group, small group kind of... Bro, bro dude mentality so if, if you found him, bro, 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 if you found him on another planet you guys were all in trouble you guys could have worked together and you know it would have been all right if we see him again we'll know what their characters are like yeah. so it was good in that sense okay it, it would be kind of funny if in uh in uh, discovery those the, the 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 big bad guys in discovery season three are these are these hunters holding yeah. holding a grudge that would be amazing and they still haven't figured out how to how to hunt these uh hunt God, these creatures it's it. like it's been another nine generations it's like there's a masking agent Agent. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Not sure. Not sure what it could be. It, it seems to behave like some sort of masking agent. Marty, you made it. <laughs> Marty, <laughs> you made it. <laughs> I went to Back to the Future 2 uh, the other day. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a weird movie. You're cooler than me. Kind of a wandering movie. So since I mentioned it. 3 is probably it? better than 2. What are you talking about? Back to the Future 3 is probably better than 2, but I don't uh, yeah. need... It's a tricky con- uh, It's a because tricky I conversation. might Because I might actually enjoy parts of 2 more, but yeah. 3 feels more like it's got its shit going on. It's got sort of, more. It's yeah. got Griff Tannen, yeah. Yeah, Frisbee. But, but Back to the Future is hoverboard, so. But yeah. Back to the Future 3 does too, but it's the Old West, and I think some people are tingly about Old West things. They just don't like it that much. Not good tingly, like, kind of like, we're in the Old West. I personally don't like when people wear those tri hats, those with those tri oh, hats. corner hats. Yeah, I don't like anything around that time period. It freaks me out. Yeah, that's so like, colonial times. That's like yeah. a, that's like a British an, colonial an 18th time. century sort of thing. That whole fashion, like, made me makes me feel uncomfortable for some mm, reason. Yeah, it was a weird time. Well, how, okay, so, um, for next week, does anybody have an interest in going back? In time to TOS. Going yeah, back hell yeah. In time. Uh, we could do a piece of the action. A piece, a piece of the action. Because I mentioned that TOS episode with the gangsters. It's an interesting one. Oh, is, well, that, is that what that one is? Is it what they go back in time? No, 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 no. They go to a planet, and it's just uh, a planet that has a bunch of 1920s style gangsters on it. Okay, sure. Yeah, we'll check that out. All right. So we'll do a piece of the action, which is, I believe, the 17th episode of season two it is. of Star Trek, the original series. Should be available on Netflix and all your other David happy, P. Harmon and Gino King. happy places. Um, so we'll check that out next week. Uh, this week has been Rogue Planet, which was cool. Uh, next week will be a piece of the action, 
And that will oasis. We'll see if that's cool hot, as well. Hot oasis like Yellowstone, but it was really like some place to Paul came it, from or something. Yeah. What? What are you talking about? He was like, reminds me of Yellowstone, as Archer said. And then to Paul's like, it actually reminds me of something else from my planet. Oh something. yeah, right. Yeah. And all the humans were like, yeah, Yellowstone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yellowstone is cool. Yeah. We know what you're talking about. All right. So uh, that'll do it for us tonight. It hasn't exploded yet. We will uh, thank again the uh, wonderful listeners, and we will thank the um, uh, Feed Spot Top 60 Star Trek Podcasts uh, list, which we have been placed upon. Because we're amazing. Somehow. Which is a great honor, and uh, you all should go check it out. We'll have the link. It's uh, blog.feedspot.com slash star underscore trek underscore podcast not underwear you can that's the link but we'll have the Under link there on Under the website there. in the show From notes www is and everything it'll be an automatic hypertext link for you you Feedback all underwear. you have to do is hi- click on it all over the place. you click on it you'll go to that link that we just read we read it uh traditionally you would read the link again so people who you know, when you hear the link come up, you see you like, Oh, I'm not, my brain is not remembering it yet. I hope the, I hope the podcast host repeats the link. It's like so back in I the day with a that. phone number when they, but we're not going to do that because we don't want to patronize you. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Dan. At it's got Star Trek. That's right. Yeah. At it's got Star Trek at Instagram, uh, Twitter and Facebook. And you can YouTube. search for us there on YouTube and uh feedback at it's got star trek podcast programs and overcast and google podcast and googly googlies and all that all that podcast side bag it's got star trek you can find us there you can email us at feedback at it's got star trek feed front that's for uh email types (laughs) not tack back tack back (laughs) back tack So you can get in touch with us in any of those places. You can follow us in any of those places. You can subscribe to us in any of those places. The most important thing is to subscribe to our fucking actual podcast. That would be the most helpful. Uh, It's got wacky Dan. We are going to... um, Dan's making some progress on this whole being wacky thing. Uh, He's going to practice over the course of the next week so that he can be even more wacky. (laughs) He's having some operator He almost dropped his ribbon synthesizer. And uh, he's going to work on the whole rhythm thing, which is going to be another factor, you know. (laughs) Dan and Jesse are professional musicians. uh, (laughs) As you can tell. And this is a sampling of of what you could get. Their services are available. Professional. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm uh, not even getting paid. And not even, yeah, exactly. They're That's the types how professional, of professional I am. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, you know the deal. Oh. We'll be back next week. Yeah. My name's Dan. My name's Jesse. Oh yeah, this thing. Uh, my name is Patrick, and I am wishing you a very hearty, We're on heartfelt, the podcast. and sincere good evening. Commander, could you uh, tell me what attacked him? They call it a dragon. Looks like a big nasty pig. <laughs> Kind of tastes like one, too. Mm. I found cellular residue in the wound. It clearly doesn't belong to this gentleman. I assume it must have come from the animal that mauled him. Yeah. What am I looking at? The cells are in a state of chromosomal flux. They're mutating. It's as if they're trying to change into something, but can't quite figure out what. That must have been a most unusual pig.